Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today I'm doing something I don't think I've done before, or if I did, it was a very long time ago. It's a cooler showdown, and we're putting the Arctic Freezer 120, this guy right here, up against the Gamdias, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Chion, Chai One. E1-120. I'm just going to refer to it as the E1-120 for this video. Gamtia is like picking really difficult names for their products. I'm pretty sure they're like Greek gods or something like that. It's just... I mean, it, yeah. They're different. They're original. I'll give them that much, but they're really hard to pronounce. So we're going to be checking these two guys out today. So let's jump straight into it. So of course, both of them are 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid coolers. Although the Arctic Freezer 120 is quite a bit thicker in terms of the radiator than the E1 120. Uh, that's going to help quite a bit because when it comes to liquid cooling, size really does matter. Uh, you know, you can do all the trickery you like with the pumps and with the fans and everything else. But at the end of the day, the size of the radiator, that really helps. It's just purely the amount of fluid that the entire system has is really going to help with the cooling performance. Now the Freezer 120 also comes with two fans, so you can have a push and pull configuration rather than the E1 120 which only has the single fan. The E1 though has Teflon tubing, which is good to see, and it's better than just the standard rubber tubing that the Freezer 120 comes with. They also have different pump designs, but they're sort of similar in size, so I don't really think there's much of an advantage either way in that area, uh, and they both have the copper plates, which is standard. The E1 120 has the Aeolus M1 120 RGB uh, fan, 120 millimeter RGB fan. So this guy right here. So it's a, a decent looking fan. Uh, it has this little button down here. We use that to control it. You just press the button uh, and that will cycle through all the different lighting modes of it. The strangest thing is with it though is that although the lighting's very good is that it runs off molex connectors so in a, the previous video i did or not the previous one but one i did not long ago was the gamdia's power supply and it came with you know molex connectors and i said who uses these anymore well i guess we figured out that question but yeah the rgb lighting does look really nice uh, with this fan so that's really good for people that want something to really uh, set off the system uh, the Arctic Freezer 120 comes with a much more standard fan design. Still quite good, but of course no lighting. Uh, nothing like that. So definitely an advantage there for the people that like RGB uh, for the E1 120. Uh, now as far as the thermal paste goes, the Freezer 120 comes with the MX4 thermal compound, which is really good stuff. Whereas the Gamdias comes with something, I'm not sure what it is, but it looks just like generic sort of thermal paste. I mean, the thermal paste only sort of goes so far, but you know, it's, it's what, if it comes with better stuff, that's always a good thing and nice to see. And on a different note, the Arctic <laughs> Freezer 120 also comes with some lollies or candy, I suppose you might say, in the United States or elsewhere. Uh, so yeah, I, I, mean, I, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, I've never tasted thermal paste flavored candy before, so... And there's a reason why. Okay, so moving on. Let's talk about the installation with these two uh, <laughs> all-in-one liquid coolers. So both of them were pretty straightforward. Honestly, I can't really... Same thing, they, they just, you, you mount them up. I mean, I guess it was slightly easier to mount the uh, pump on the Arctic cooler, but it was also a little more difficult to mount the radiator because of the two fans there. But, you know, they're pretty straightforward to install. The one thing I will say is that the Gamtiers didn't come with a manual in the box. I don't know why, but it didn't. So I had no idea how to install it. I mean, you can kind of guess your way through it if you're an enthusiast, but uh, I wanted to make sure that I got everything right because obviously I'm reviewing them. Uh, so I had to go on their website. It just seems strange. Maybe it was just me and mine didn't come with it. 
Uh, but yeah, I thought the, the fact that it didn't come with an installation guide was pretty shocking for an all-in-one liquid cooler. So with all that being said, let's jump into the testing. So of course I used my non d 8700K, pretty hot running CPU, and I tested it both a stock settings and overclock to 4.8 gigahertz on all six cores. So I thought that'd be quite fair. I did a few tests with it. So the first one was Intel's XTU benchmark. So as you can see here, uh, both of them do decently, especially at the stock speeds, but the Arctic 120 uh, definitely wins by about six to seven degrees with uh, both of the tests. Then we go to Handbrake, a 23 minute 1080p video render. And the Freezer 120 wins now by about five or six degrees, so a little bit closer to that one. Then PC Mark 10. This is a good one, there's lots of photo editing, video editing stuff in it. The Freezer 120 wins again, but this time it was much closer, only about three degrees in it once they were overclocked, so that was uh, an interesting one. And then of course I threw in a game, this was F1 2017, this one uses the CPU quite a bit. And the Arctic Freezer 120 also won, but there wasn't really that much in it, and of course being a game, it has much lower temps in general. And that's what I always tell you guys when it comes to coolers. Um, you know, you, you if, if you're doing workstation stuff, then of course it's going to matter more. When you render, it'll really, you know, your CPU heat will go up a lot. But when it comes to just games and things like that, the CPU temps are usually a lot lower, especially in games that don't utilize the CPU much, obviously. Um, so it's it's less of an issue. So that's why when you usually when you do your stress testing, that'll most likely be the highest temps your CPU will ever see. And when you're gaming, in general, you will see lower temps. However, noise isn't everything. <laughs> noise isn't everything. I said, cooling isn't everything. What about noise? Got it around the wrong way. <laughs> I've been doing the channel like over three years and I still get it wrong. Uh, yeah, so uh, noise wise, they were both pretty good. When it's when they're both, you know, you're just browsing web doing casual things like that. They're both near silent. I mean, you get a bit of fan noise, a little bit of pump noise, but it's not really much. And if you have, uh, you have a decent case, uh, you won't really hear much out of it, especially if you're actually listening to music, then you won't hear anything. Uh, once you load them up, though, do a render or you play a CPU intensive game, you will hear them ramp up. It still wasn't that bad. I would say the Game Diaz probably did better in terms of noise. But really, that's only because I think it as a single fan, as opposed to the Freezer 120, which is dual fan. Could also be the fan designs themselves. But uh, yeah, so the Game Tears was a little bit quieter, but there really wasn't that much in it. And honestly, both of them were pretty good when it came to noise. But, uh, but as always, I'll let you guys judge for yourself. So first I'll show you what the Freezer 120 sounds like, then I'll show you what the E1 120 Game Diaz sounded like, and this was during the handbrake rendering test. So there you have it. That gives you a good idea there. That's sort of like a worst case scenario since that test is pretty hard. And if you're playing games, obviously the fan speeds will be lower because the temps won't be going up quite as high. But even then, the noise isn't really that bad. So you'll be fine with either of these coolers in terms of noise. Which brings us now to the conclusion. And who wins this all-in-one 120mm liquid cooler showdown? A first on Tech Showdown. So... Let's bring price into it, because obviously that's going to be a big factor. The Freezer 120 currently, right now, sells for 75 US dollars, excluding tax, from Arctic. So that's if you want to buy it off them directly. Now the Game Diaz Chion E1 120, I have no idea what the price is. You might say, Kevin, you know, Jesus, get it together. But honestly, guys, I looked everywhere on their website. Uh, on their resellers, both in you know, in lots of different countries, Australia, uh, the USA, Canada. I looked everywhere, but I just cannot find one of these listed anywhere. Which means I don't know what the price is. If you know what the price is, or you can find somewhere that's actually selling this, then please let me know in the comment section down below, because I couldn't find it, and I have no idea why. Because this is listed on their website. This isn't like a product that's you know they're not running anymore. This is a product they're still selling, they're still shipping them out. That's why I have my hands on one. 
but I got sent it not by them directly, but by one of their suppliers. And I'll need to contact them to maybe get the details and they may be able to tell me what the pricing is on it. But as of right now, I do not know the pricing. Maybe when I'm editing this video, I'll be able to put the pricing in and I'll have it right under my, <laughs> my face right now so you guys know. But because I don't know currently, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. And I did look everywhere. So I will be emailing the supplier and trying to figure out what is going on there uh, with the pricing because I couldn't find it anywhere. So let's just move on from that. In terms of looks, I have to give it to the E1 120. It's a big win there. The RGB fan looks awesome. It's it's a very good looking fan. You know, the RGB lighting looks really nice. It'll really sit off your case, especially if you have this mounted in the back like I did. It looks really good. So it definitely wins in terms of looks. But in performance, it's a win for the Freezer 120, that's for sure. It's a much bigger radiator and it's got dual fans. It's just the better overall cooler and expect about a, you know, maybe five to seven degree difference in temps, uh, low attempts with the Freezer 120 if you went for that one. So you're really gonna have to weigh it up for yourself. Are you someone that's wanting more looks and maybe you're just wanting it for the looks and just lower temperatures, you're not really that keen on overclocking, then I would probably go for the Gam Diaz. Uh, if you're someone who is after the performance, you are overclocking, then I would go for the Freezer 120 because it did have the better performance if you don't care about RGB. So that's gonna round out this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please let me know if you want to see more videos like this in the future or maybe what kind of coolers do you want me to compare because I'd like to do it if you guys want me to keep making these videos. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.